In this video, we're going to go through another CFA Level 1 exam style question on the topic of time value of money, this time discussing perpetuities. Uh, we're going to introduce a formula which is not only useful for the quantitative methods section of the exam, but actually very, very important for, for example, equities as well, when we tend to assume a certain uh, flow of future payments in the form of dividends, for example. So if this is something you want to get right in the exam, do keep watching and let's get solving. So this is the question which I want us to have a go at. Given a discount rate of 7%, the present value of an investment promising to pay 200 euro per year into perpetuity, so forever, with the first payment to be received in three years' time is closest to and three options follow. Okay, so let me draw a timeline so that we can graphically portray what's going on here. Um, time one, sorry, time zero today, end of year one, end of year two, end of year three, end of year four, and so on. And what this question suggests is that starting in, uh, in three years' time, we're going to be receiving um, equal payments of 200 per year forever into perpetuity and we're asked for the PV over here at time zero so today so what's going to be our formula well the PV of a level set of cash flows is going to be the value of that cash flow CF divided by R which is the discount rate however the problem with this is it's going to be computed, just like with all, almost every um, formula that you saw before or you know, with what your calculator assumes. When you type in this or when you compute this, it's going to assume that you are standing over here. So you are one period away from the first of these cash flows. So whatever result we get we're going to have to perform a little bit of discounting because this is going to give us the PV at time two of the cash flows starting in period three. So in order to compute the PV at time zero, we're going to perform some discounting back to time zero, but it's going to be over a period of two years. Right, let's uh, get the data in. So the PV at time two is basically 200 divided by just R, not one plus R, just R. So that's going to be in the example 7%. So 0 0.07. And uh, let's see what that is. 200 divided by 0 0.07. Okay, that's 2,857.14. Okay, as you can see, this is one of the answers, but it's not the correct answer to the question. That would be the PV at time two. And uh, we need to discount this back to time zero. So divide by a factor of 1.07. So that's basically the one plus the interest rate to the power of two on my calculator, divide by 1.07. And now you can easily just raise this to the power of two by pressing the X squared key. This obviously assumes you've got your calculator to set up, set up uh, to handle such problems using the AOS method um, instead of the chain. Uh, if you don't, uh, please go to the video on formatting your Texas Instruments calculator, which is included in the uh, um, links section in the description of the video. I press equals and I get 2,496, at least roughly this number and this naturally corresponds to answer C.